Okay, so we're going to look at a quick review of adding and subtracting like and unlike fractions. So we're not talking mixed numbers, we're just talking general fractions. Again, like fractions, we can see we got a definition right here, are fractions with common denominators. So for example, if I had something like one third and two thirds, those have common denominators. The three is the denominator, it's the same. Unlike fractions are fractions without common denominators. So something like one third and three fifths, they have different denominators. Okay, so we'll look first at um, some like fractions. So for like fractions, let's say we had something fairly simple like one third plus one third. So we can see we've already got a common denominator there. They are like fractions. We are adding them together. Now the most common mistake people make and I see this all the time, is people would get two six. They just add the numerators, that's the top number, and add the denominator and get six. However, that is not correct. We know that is not correct if we were to draw a quick picture of one third plus another third. We would see that does not equal two sixths, but two thirds. So one of the most important things you need to remember is that when you add or subtract fractions, you do not add or subtract the denominators. All right, so I'm going to put it up there in big, bold, red letters. Do not forget that. Do not add or subtract the denominators when we are adding and subtracting fractions. We keep the denominators the same. So one third plus one third would equal two thirds. That would be our final answer for that problem. Okay, if we were to sort of show it visually, right, we've got two thirds. That's what it means there. Let's look at another quick example of a problem with like fractions. Let's say we had something like three fifths plus four fifths. Okay, so we've already got common denominators. They are like fractions. We do not add the denominators. We just add the numerators. We would get seven fifths. Now, we do notice that that is an improper fraction. Again, an improper fraction means the numerator is bigger than the denominator. Um, the seven is larger than the five, which means I need to turn it into a mixed number. So maybe we also call it simplifying. Uh, so and we can think about that again, seven fifths, there's a few ways we can do this. One, we can think about what that would be. Seven fifths would be like one, two, three, four, five fifths, six, seven fifths. So we can see that's like one hole, we've got one hole right here, and then two-fifths still remaining. So we can kind of visualize that. Um, we could also think about if we take five pieces out of the seven, that would make one hole. We can also do the sort of like the long division method where you're like seven divided by five goes in one time, minus five is two, and then we just kind of work our way around that problem with one and two-fifths as our mixed number. So again, lots of ways to do that. There's other videos and other things, ways to see that. But our one and two fifths would be our final answer because um, we don't want to leave it as an improper fraction. We will now look at two quick examples of unlike fractions. Okay, so for unlike fractions, let's say we had something we'll call this problem C, like seven eighths plus one half. Okay, seven eighths plus one half. So if we have seven eighths plus one half, they do not have common denominators. They are unlike fractions. So before I can add or subtract, I have to make common denominators. Okay, we've talked about that in other videos. Um, so we could either multiply like this left side both by two and this right side both by eight. However, the faster method would be just to see that we could turn two into eight so we could just we only have to multiply one side that would make our least common denominator so that gives me seven eighths plus four eighths i would add those together that gives me 11 eighths i do not have a final answer because i do not want to leave it as an improper fraction so i'm going to think eight goes into 11 like that leaves me with three pieces left over so i have one and three eighths as an answer Last example, let's do one with subtraction. Subtraction, you do exactly the same. Um, again, you do not subtract the denominators, you just subtract the numerators. So let's say we had something like five sixths minus one 
tenth. Okay, we're gonna we have unlike fractions. We want to make common denominators first. We can think about the multiples of six and ten if we need to. All right, so we've got six, twelve, eighteen, ten, twenty, thirty. We can keep going here. Twenty-four and thirty. So our common denominator right there. It's going to be 30. It's our least common denominator. Again, you could probably do this in your head if you know your times table as well. So then I'm going to do times 5, times 5, and times 3. That gives me 25 thirtieths minus 3 thirtieths. You'll see I like to write down all my steps. That way I'm less likely to make mistakes. Now I'm subtracting. So again, the denominator stays the same. Do not add or subtract it. And then we just do 25 and minus 3 would give you 22. Now we do not have a final answer here because it is not simplified. We always want to look at our answer and see, can I simplify or reduce it? And in this case, we could divide both of these by 2, which would give us 11 fifteenths, um, which now is a simplified answer because we cannot divide it anymore. Again, 22 thirtieths and 11 fifteenths are equivalent or equal, but 11 fifteenths is just a little bit simpler with a little bit smaller numbers. And so adding, subtracting like and unlike fractions, not too hard. If they're like, you just add or subtract the numerator. If they're unlike, you have to make common denominators and then you add or subtract the numerator. And then always don't forget to turn any improper fractions into mixed numbers or simplify any fractions that can be simplified. Good luck.